which will basically always result in the dividend income for qualified dividend being lower than what it would be under ordinary income tax rates. And so it gets a little messy once again in this tax calculation area. That said, let's go back to page one. We're looking at the uh, dividend income. So that's going to be on line 3A and B, where we have the qualified dividends and the ordinary dividends. Note the structure here that the dividends that are going to go here on 3B will include the qualified dividends. In other words, the ordinary dividends, if the ordinary dividends is $1,000 and the qualified dividends is $800, then it's it's not like we have $1,800 of dividends. It's that 800 of the 1,000 are uh, qualified dividends. Why would it be structured that way? Well, that makes it so that this outer column we can add up and still add up to taxable income, whether the dividends be ordinary dividends or qualified dividends, because they're going to be taxed either way. The problem is that we then have to break up this number, 86,150, between the qualified dividends and the other income. In other words, the income tax at ordinary income rates and the income tax at the qualified rates and then apply the appropriate tax on the table, which again is something the software will typically do. All right, so usually you'll get a form. It might not look exactly like this because you're going to get it from financial institutions, but the, the name of the or the numbering of the cells will be the same. The primary two cells we will look at is uh, 1A and 1B, where we have the total ordinary dividends and the qualified dividends. So let's go back on over. And let's say that we go to this trustee dropdown and we go to dividends. And I'm just going to say this comes from, let's just say like E-Trade or something. So we're going to imagine that's the, the institution that we're, the financial institution we're investing with.